Hayley Alexis, welcome to the Going Bananas show. I'm really excited. I'm really excited that you're, uh, you're with us. Thank you. I'm very excited to be here as well. Where is here? Where are you in uh, Germany? You're in Germany, right? Yes, I am in Germany. I am in Bavaria, um, a little bit south of Munich, but technically still Munich, sort of. It's a be beautiful area, Munich, actually. Yeah, it's the most beautiful area. <laughs> Hang on. Uh, your, your podcast, it's totally intriguing. Totally intriguing yeah. how, how you're so natural and you just, you do this fantastic, fantastic podcast and, and so many people are so interested in you. How, how did that all happen? Um, it started many years ago. It didn't start out as me wanting to meet people. It started, it started out as me wanting to make friends, I think. And then it turned into people finding me interesting, finding it interesting to have a look into a lifestyle that they might not achieve themselves. Because whether you're, let's say, an American trying to come to Germany, you might not have the opportunity to do that. Or whether you're a German, having the ability to look at Germany through someone else's eyes. I think that's why people find it interesting. But, but where did you start it? Were you already in Germany or did you have this idea, I'm going to Germany? Um, I started it actually technically because I wanted to talk about just moving to Germany. I knew I was moving to Germany, but I did not know anything about it. So I don't think the idea came till afterwards. And then I started realizing, hey, I want to show my mom, my um, family, my friends that Germany and America are it's very similar, but very different at the same time. And so that's where it came from. And then it just came to other people finding me as well. It's, 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 it's wonderful how it's called, it's called the imagination of the people. Yeah, I think so too. I mean, it's a fun, I always have to say, um, because when people meet me too, they say, oh, well, you're very um, laid back, normal. And I'm like, well, yes, I'm not a, a fake person on the internet. I'm a real person. This is my real life that I'm sharing. Some of it may be a little exaggerated, but it's still very much so real. My, my impression is the success is because you're totally genuine. You're just, you're just Haley Alexis. There's no, there's no show. There's, it's just, it's just this wonderful, really human, genuine character. That's exactly, yes. A very <laughs> interesting character, I should say. Why, why, why Germany? Why, why not, why not uh, Rome in Italy or Paris or Barcelona? Uh, how did the, how did that happen? Paris was a top Paris was a top choice. I do have to say that it was juggling between um, any major city because unfortunately I was not geographically or any type of a lot of Americans. Um, um, I mean, I love America. I've lived in America, that's a but Americans yes. Americans don't nor, don't sometimes look outside their own shores. No. So when I thought of Europe, I thought of Paris maybe Berlin, Rome, and I think those are the major cities. So I was trying to find international fun cities in Europe and Munich popped up as one of the wealthiest cities. And I went to Munich a long time ago, um, I think in 2010, and I loved it there. I was like, I wanna come back, I wanna experience it. And I said, why not give it a try? Yeah, great. Uh, I mean, I'm. You, 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 you knew it was cold here, right? <laughs> <laughs> Not mess. I mean, I came the end of January, beginning of February, so I flew into relatively cooler weather. I remember buying a jacket in Florida. Um, the winter jackets in Florida are nothing. In, <laughs> in an outlet mall. You must have bought it in an outlet yes, mall, right? Yes, exactly. It was an outlet mall for $25. I remember it. And I came here and I was freezing cold. I did not expect it to be so, I mean, dumb of me to think that, but I did not expect it to be so cold. It was very interesting though. Very that's fun. A huge, that's a huge thing from going from uh, Florida. You're, 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 you're born in Florida, right? Yes, born and raised in Florida. East coast, east, east coast or on the Gulf Coast? So technically on, I would say South Central Florida, if that is, yeah, just South, South Florida. 
There's yeah. like a there's like a line. So in Florida, we have the south of Florida, which everyone usually knows as Miami. Um, I'm trying to think of what other major Miami, <laughs> and then you have the north of Florida. All right. <laughs> so anything above. <laughs> Disney is north, and anything below Disney is technically south. And so, I was considered South Florida. So, if you go to the beach, do you go to the Gulf Coast or uh, the other side? I prefer the Gulf Coast, but I know a lot of people enjoy the other side. I just don't like it there. I think the water's dirty. <laughs> the water oh, on the Gulf Coast or the East Coast. I think the water on um, the, oh my gosh, the East Coast is very dirty compared to the Gulf Coast. I mean, I, that could just be, you know, personal preference and I have this image in my head of what it looks like, but I do prefer the Gulf of Mexico. Uh, I, work, I work there in Tampa and uh, Clearwater, Naples. It's a beautiful, beautiful part of the world. Yeah, it's very, it's really, that's what people, um, and growing up there, I was very blessed. I tell a lot of people, you know, being able to grow up in Florida is something that is amazing. Um, I'm very lucky because some of the things that I consider to be normal, not normal in Germany or anywhere else in the world. Oh, it's just, it's, it's, uh, it's wonderful that you chose Germany, but you must have, uh, you must have had problems, which is what, what, what you're all about. Problems with the culture, uh, the culture, the language, how getting everything done. Yep. Like, like you said, the weather as well. That's something that I've never had to shovel snow before in my life before coming to Germany. And that was very fun for me. I do have to say. Are you, are you a European now? I'm an honorary German. I call my, <laughs> I call myself an honorary German. I have a little badge that I wear. No, I'm just kidding. But I do honestly think that I have a lot of tendencies. My friends and my family that know me, that have grown up with me, um, they say that I have changed tremendously over the years. Yeah, I think I think it does bring change. Now, one one, it's an understanding of another culture, and two. Ever, my, my experience from either coming to Germany or certainly I lived in Paris, everything changes when you can communicate with them. If you can, yep. uh, I don't want to say them, it, it sounds a little, that, but, but when, when you can, when, when they realize that you're making the effort to integrate, then I think everything changes. You can totally enjoy the country now. And also, I think it has a lot to do with, like you said, in the United States, we don't tend to travel as much. We stay within our borders. And so when you co when you just leave this little hole that you've been in and you're able to easily access other places in the world, that's something that was crazy to me. Something that would cost me, let's say, $5,000 to do in the United States cost me $200 to do in Europe. Being able to fly to Paris, drive to Paris, take a bus to Paris, a couple max 100 euros would be a fortune in the United States. So I'm able to experience a lot more here. Are you, are you traveling much? Are you getting, because it's not that far to Hungary and it's, uh, it's in the corner where you are. Switzerland's right there. Austria's right there. Hungary's right there. Uh, are you getting around? I mean, Austria, I think, I mean, aside from Corona, I'm not leaving my house that often now, I do have to say. Um, but before all this, I would, we would go to Austria for a day trip even. Just go for a few hours, wa walk around, go somewhere nice, and then come home. And that was a trip. So I do think, I mean, being here in Germany, I've traveled tremendously. I've traveled to Australia. I've traveled to Asia. I've traveled to all these different places that I don't think I ever would have been able to had I stayed in the United States. So you came to Germany. Um, you know, I don't want to... Uh, well, I think, I think you're open enough that I can ask you. You came, no boyfriend, no, no, uh, just on your own. Uh, I think you, you came to be a nanny, right? Yeah, I came to be technically an au pair. They're a little bit different. Mm -hmm. They're underpaid. <laughs> no, um, <laughs> I technically came to Germany. I want to say the main reason I came was because of a bad breakup. And I thought to myself, I wanted to start my new life in a new country. And I just found the cheapest way to come to a new country. And it was being an au pair. And so then that changed into being something else, being something else, doing something else. And it just grew from there. And, and fell in love with a German man. 
yes, Mike is here. Mike is always there. Mike is still here. Mike was actually a lot of people. I've said this many times before, but every time I repeat myself, no one ever listens to me. Mike was my first ever date in Germany when I got here. Really? And I never, and we didn't really, really, yeah, and we didn't date until like many, many, I mean, many months, a year, two years later. But he was technically my first date here. I saw, I saw in、um, one of your podcasts. I just saw, I skipped over, and、um, it seemed to me that you were, you were the American, you were the instigator of of the relationship. No, you were the one. That's what I want.、Yep. I'm going for it. Yep, I said, "Hey, what's up?" And he said, "No, I don't want to talk to you." <laughs> and and I was like, "Oh well, why not? <laughs> you're so loud, you're so sparkly, you're so energetic. What's wrong with you?" And then from there, it was just a roller coaster. And then I think also what turned Mike off, which a lot of I've talked about this many times, that what turned people off from me as a person was my mindset of the, you know the American mindset that I had, and then it changed. Progressively, I guess. Over yeah. The years. I mean, it's not not. I I, I think when you have、um, relate relate in a relationship from two different. I don't want to say that Germany has got a completely different culture, but in some way it does. You know, we're we're Western, let's say. But nevertheless,、yes. uh, Americans are. I, I embrace the Amer. I mean, I live there, as I said. But、um, you are loud. <laughs> You are crazy.、Yes. You are, but、yes. but I mean that's why that's why we love that's why you're so、uh, America is so successful in show business and things like that. That they're they、yep. they, they, they they're wonderful storytellers. Better. That's from, yes. Yeah. They uh, uh, do you, do you watch or what? Do you, what are you watching TV? Are you watching movies or?、Um, I mean, I watch a mixture. I think now. I mean, it's very hard because nothing new on the actual. I want to say television sender. Nothing's coming out there, so everything's switched to Netflix now, a very streaming base. But、um, I do have to say that I watch a whole bunch of stuff. One thing that I really loved, though, I mean, it was German. Was、um, what's the guy's name? Stefan Rob. I、Stephen、loved him. Stefan Ross. Rob, Stefan Rob. Oh, I, I thought I thought we were talking about uh, uh,、no. uh, a singer from our region who does a lot of shows with us. No. Oh well, he'll be upset. No. He'll、that's... be upset if he hears that. <laughs> no, not him. <laughs> oh sorry. <laughs> oh sorry. <laughs> sorry. But are you embracing because you're you're the home of Oktoberfest, where you are? Yes. Are you embracing yourself into、yes. that? Oh, of course.、Um, a very interesting thing that I did on the side when I first got to Germany was that I was a dandel model.、Um, <laughs> very. Sorry, did my eyebrows just go up there? Did I just?、Uh, yeah, it was a dandel very, model. I, I had no idea. Yeah, a model. They used me. It was very. <laughs> that sounds very bad. <laughs> no, but、um, I don't even know how I found the person actually.、Um, Unfortunately, his business is no longer there due to Corona. But when I first got here, I think my friend was doing something with this company, and she said, "Would you like to come、um, watch a show or meet me one day?" And I said, "Yeah, sure." And he said, "Hey, do you want to slip in one?" And I was like, "Yeah, sure. They're beautiful. Why not?" And then that turned into me doing that for I think one or two years. I sort of.、Um... Looking at America and looking at the, the whole Bavarian、uh, Oktoberfest, I sort of I sort of liken the whole、um, Oktoberfest schlager to a little bit like country. No. Yes, I agree. I miss country music. I do have to say, but I enjoy schlager music.、Um, I enjoy people turn into different people when they hear this music.、Um, I don't know how to explain it. They turn into sometimes animals. That's <laughs> they turn crazy、it's, with a little bit of alcohol. <laughs> yeah, and they all know the words to every song. Like, it's amazing. I mean, it's, yes, it's totally cool. I do like I do like country music, but I do think this is like that. It's it's like this sort of cult somehow that、uh, yep. that it's so energetic and it's got this fantastic beat. Everybody knows the words、uh, to the、yep. songs, and it's really, really cool. But can can、uh, can get crazy. That's for sure. No. Yep. Yep. So so so,、um, Haley, when you watch a movie, are you, are you watching it in German or are you watching watching it in England in English? 
It depends sometimes in German, sometimes in English. I do have to say for me, it's very hard to watch a movie when I know that it's in English and I can see the mouth moving and it's not syncing properly. And you know the voice, right? Me- well, you- yes, exactly. Yeah. I hear The Rock and The Rock is a very manly person, Dwayne Johnson, and then you hear him in German and I'm like, oh, what is this? And nothing against the man that does his voice. Um, I'm pretty sure he's a wonderful person, but some people have, that's like their character. Their voice is a piece of that character. Yeah, someone told me they watched, uh, I, I could well be wrong when I say this, but I think in it might not be it might not even be in german but in another language arnold schwarzenegger has the same voice as sylvester stallone and so then then they did a movie together and then it's really weird because it's the same guy speaking and it's just they couldn't get it yeah that's that's something that does bother me but if a movie is in german um or if they're only offering it with German synchronization, I will 1000% watch it, understand it, and love it and enjoy it. Right. If it's a good movie, I should say. Right. Yeah. Are you, are you, uh, do you, do you get into live entertainment shows? Do you get to go and, uh, see? Because there's uh, Munich, such a hub for, you know, every big concert or live show or theater show has got to, even circuses. I'm, I'm myself quite yeah. involved with circuses, but they all come through Munich. Well, Munich's a big home for one of the biggest circuses yeah. in Germany. But are you, are you, do you go and see these? No, not necessarily. I, I, I think the only live show that I've seen is a comedian and I don't remember his name. Unfortunately, it was many years ago and it was actually very interesting though, but other events, I haven't really gone to that many. But then when we, when we get back into the movies and we, we tell the story, I said, do you think, um, do you think that the, the, the German movies, do you think that they are, they are touching your heart? There's you know, the Americans and uh, they're, they're making great movies in which, which you're crying. I, I cry like a baby yeah. on some of them. But I'm not sure. Uh, how do you feel about the German uh, stuff? Do they think? Do you think they can touch you as much? Oh, oh this. <laughs> oh, that's so mean to ask because then I don't want to be the person that says, "Well, the German movies aren't." I feel like Hollywood. Um, they did such an amazing job. They have superstars that are known all around the world, and unfortunately, Germany hasn't necessarily got that same, I guess, ingredient that the United States has regarding Hollywood. Yeah, I, um, their I think movies, that's fair. They do touch me. I, yeah. I think, I think in, in Europe, certainly, we're, we're definitely getting better. I think the divide, yeah, is, a lot better. The divide is getting closer yes. and closer. But then do you think, <coughs> how do you think the humor di- uh, uh, differentiates from, uh, from English speaking humor to European. I can, I can say it's Italian because sometimes when I was in France, I would see something which was amazingly funny, but, uh, yep. the humor is different. Yes. A lot different. I tell people all the time that sometimes European humor, it's sometimes complex. It's also sometimes sarcastic or dark sometimes. And in the United States, we're more like, sunshine happy funny very loud that's a funny part um a lot of stereotypes that's a funny part and that's not necessarily transferred over to the european aspect of comedy or entertainment but some somehow uh sometimes when you're with mike does does he get you all the time or does you're giggling or chuckling and he looks and just says no. yeah i don't see i don't see the funny side no all the time yeah and then he says why are you laughing so loud that's not that funny and i'm like <laughs> my no, heart I, <laughs> like, no. I appreciate i appreciate that that sometimes we're but 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 it works uh they're sometimes laughing like crazy and i'm just like i don't see it like you no, know. no no that's but what, that's good i see german people and i'm la- and they're laughing and i'm sitting there in the movie theater and I'm, i know i understood this joke i know that i understood what he said but why is everyone laughing is there a second meaning to this and no their humor is just different i'm like okay how was it when you came when you came to europe and because 
how 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 do you get it that I mean Germans are probably the world champions of work ethic. They're just and and the Americans are quite different, no? Yeah. yeah. Well, I think there's a bunch of different little categories for work work ethic. Um, Germans, I feel like, are very hardworking. I think Americans are hardworking too, but Germans have a very clear divide between work life, personal life, and they try their best to create a nice um, divide between those two. In the United States, there's sort of an overlap, I guess. Who's who's enjoying their life the better? The us? Oh, I mean, the Germans, I, and I don't. Of course. I, pardon. The Germans, of course. Yeah. That's yeah. yeah. I mean, I I think in America you have sometimes more and more opportunities to have fun because Americans are sometimes more fun. <laughs> that's that's mean to say, but sometimes they're a little bit more open and they're more cheery. So then people around you are more cheery. But I do have to say, enjoyment of life and the quality of life. Germany, one thousand percent. Cool. So you're 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 gonna stay. You're gonna stay in Germany for as long as I can. I do have to say that when I'm older and probably when my joints start hurting, I probably don't want to be in the snow. I would probably prefer being on a beach somewhere. Are, but you, are you skiing? For the are you skiing? Future. No, no. I'm drinking at the um, slopes. Yeah, yeah. Because. Yeah. Uh, I think Garmisch, Garmisch and Oberstdorf, not too yes. far away from you. No, fantastic, fantastic resorts there. No, no. Have you yeah. been? Have you been to these resorts? Um, I've been to a few. I, I'm trying to think. I always forget. I always like mix places up. I've only been to a few places that are like ski slopes, resorts, and all that good stuff. And I'm always the person that someone says, "Would you like to go snowboarding?" And I say, "No, I'll stay at the sauna. No, I'll stay at the pool." But thank you for inviting me. <laughs> yeah, no, it's uh, yeah, I really like it. But uh, well, certainly uh, there's a certain danger. Uh, associated with uh, doing these uh, snowboarding and uh, and skiing. Mm -mm. Yep, and I'm the person. I think you have to be the person that starts it at a young age, in order to not injure yourself. I mean, people still get injured when they're babies snowboarding, but like Mike, he started snowboarding probably when he was three years old. That's the first time he's been on a snowboard. Me, the first time I've been on a snowboard, I was 16 and injured myself. And then after that, I was like, never again. Yeah, I'm not a big fan of snowboard. It's pretty, uh, pretty tough. Pretty tough if you don't, if you start it too late, it's like every sport. You have to, yep. uh, you have to start early when, when you have no fear. That's yep. for sure. And, and if you start with uh, a few lessons, then you can go forward with it. But if you try and teach yourself at 20 years old, you're going to break something. Exactly. <laughs> mm. And, 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 and the, the business side of, of you in what, what were you doing in, in Florida? So in Florida, I do have to say I was relatively young in Florida, but I was working. I'm trying to think of exactly what I did. You're so relatively I was young now. I, I am, but in Florida, before I came to Germany, I think I was, how old was I? 22? And I was still in school at the time as well. So I was working part-time as a bartender and I was working part-time at a retail store and I was like a, I don't even know, it's not a manager, but I was doing basically something in retail. I was just a little higher up position, but I was also working part-time at a bar, as a bartender. Did they, um, and you, you didn't want to do that here or it was straight to sort of look caring? You were, you came here as a carer basically for kids, whether it was an au pair or a nanny. Yeah, so I had a degree <laughs> um, and I came to Germany with my degree. It was an accounting based degree. And I came to the, I don't know if it was the Arbeitsamt at the time. And I asked them, hey, what can I do with my degree? And they're like, nothing, because our systems are totally different on how we do taxes. And they said, but if you take this 3000 euro course, you'll be able to switch it over and able to work in taxes. And I was like, well, I'm working as a au pair. We make 265 euros a month. Um, I don't have 3000 euros. So that never happened. <laughs> But that's why I stayed in, I think, caring for children, because it was very easy. 
people in Munich, they want to have an English speaker. They want to have a nanny. They want to have people that take care of their kids. So it was a very easy, comfortable job. How do you, how do you, do you miss your family? Um, <laughs> should I be honest? Or yeah, I, be? I mean, because we have, um, I'm in Europa Park. We have uh, many, many, uh, just in the art, just in my world, in the artists, we have more than 300 people. 10% are from Germany the, and the rest oh, wow. are from uh, 30 different countries, China, Brazil, yeah, wow. uh, from all over the world. And, and some of them, some of them are like, yeah, my family's there. I'm, I'm doing my life and, and they understand I've gone. And some, some, some people struggle with it. They want to, uh, they're always on the phone to their family and they're missing. And one or two just said, you know, I, I want to go and live back in my own city uh, because, oh. because they struggle with that. Um, I struggled with it at first. When I first got to Germany, I don't think I went home until I got here in 2015. And I don't think I went home until 2017 the first time. I could be wrong, but I'm pretty sure it was 2017. And it was almost two years. And I remember being sad, but also nothing changed. It's not like I missed that much. I may have lost some friends. I may have um, lost a few relationships or not have as strong as relationships as I did, but I realized that my core of people, my best friends and my family, they were still there and they were always going to be there. Um, and I'm very lucky that uh, from Miami to Munich, you can find direct flights or Miami to Frankfurt. You can find eight hour flights usually, and they're relatively affordable. So my parents, my mom, um, my family members, my friends, they can come visit me very quickly. So they come to visit with you and they just listen to you communicating with everyone. They've got no idea what you're talking about. Yeah, when my mom came here for the first time, we went to a shop and um, we were buying souvenirs. And the lady at the shop, she was asking me questions because she was confused that I was speaking German because I don't look German. But she said my German was nice. And then my mom's speaking English and she's like, well, who's this lady? And my mom and I, we don't necessarily look alike. So she's like, who's this random lady that you're speaking English to? I'm like, oh, this is my mom. She's from America. And she's like, oh, my gosh. She's like, this is really cool. And then she told my mom, your daughter is speaking really good German. And my mom was very proud then. And she was like, my daughter speaks German. And I'm like, oh my gosh, so embarrassing, mommy. <laughs> you know? And then how much does Mike want to uh, go over to Florida? If, if Mike could give up his life right now, if someone said, I'll give you um, one penny <laughs> to go to Florida, the United States, Mike would take the penny and leave the next day. Yeah. Mike, there's no question. Yeah. I think it's like you want what you can't have or what you're not used to. Yeah, um, people are used to Florida. People say when I was living in America, everyone said, God, I would love that. I would love that. And they say, hey, we always think we always think the grass is greener where we're not. Yep. Yeah. And everyone finds something yeah. to complain about. Someone in the United States, I will complain about the United States. It's just because I've lived there my whole life. Mike will find something to complain about of Germany. It's because he's lived here his whole life. You get bored, you get tired, very mundane. Yeah. Uh, and um, I about living in sort of the southern states, uh, there's, no, you don't, there's no real um, seasons, no? You don't, well, like you say, you'll never shovel snow in Florida, right? Mm, no. Um, there's summer. Wait, there's, I want to say we have sort of a spring, then we have summer, then we have extra hot summer, and then we have something that's sort of winter, but not really. And I do have to laugh, though, because Mike came to Florida and I said, Mike, you should bring a hoodie and a jacket because it does sometimes get cold in Florida. He says, it doesn't get cold in Florida. It's the Everglades. I said, no, but it's very cold. So then we came to Florida and it was, I think, New Year's or something. And it was one of the first years um, in a very long time that it snowed in the north of Florida. And it was so cold, even in Miami. We were in Miami, we were in Orlando, everywhere it was freezing cold. Mike had to borrow my mom's clothing. <laughs> <laughs> I felt yeah, so bad but, for him. He had to wear my but it's not, the, it's not the same. I, 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 I would miss if I wasn't living in Europe. I would, uh, I would miss it. That uh, 
I miss the, 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 the significant changes, you know, certainly because you're sim in a similar sort of area, uh, the climate wise to where, where I am, it's a bit, um, it's a bit more extreme. The, the summers are hotter, the, the winters are colder, but, um, I think I would miss that if I was living in such a beautiful place as Florida, where it's, where you can have a, you can say three months in advance, we're having a barbecue on Saturday and we're going to do that. Yep. Uh, here, we can't, we can't plan that far ahead. <laughs> no, never. Even today, I'm like, oh, well, it's going to be a nice day to go for a walk. And then I'm like, oh, it's snow raining, sort of raining, but sort of snowing. Nah, I'll stay inside today. No, thanks. <laughs> yeah, we've, we've got rubbish weather at the moment, but, uh, but yeah, that's part of it. I like it. Hmm? Yep. It'll get better. Yeah, it will get better. What um, I was going to ask you, because uh, here in uh, Europa Park, we did these Aurea Awards last, uh, last week. And uh, it's uh, the, my, my boss, uh, who's uh, one of the owning uh, members of the uh, family that own Europa Park. We had these Aurea Awards, which we support a lot of uh, young students all around Germany to send in their proposals and it, and the winning candidate got got uh, will actually work their whole project sponsored by us new new um, media in in the media world and uh, it's completely different to my world i was always in live entertainment take an artist give them a piece of music and a costume and ask them to to do that and uh, i just wondered because it's topical right now um, are you are you a gamer because you're like you say you're at home and are you a gamer into uh, VR or playing games or? I mean, I enjoy a good game, um, but virtual reality and stuff like that, I haven't. I'm, I don't know that much about. But I think that being online, you have sort of a understanding of it. Am I an expert? Not at all, probably not even an amateur, but I have a hopefully a general understanding about it, but no gaming. No, it's it's uh, I'm 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 not a gamer myself, but um, I do understand not necessarily just with games, but VR, AR, MR, XR. Um, these are things that we will have to educate ourselves because it's the future. The future is digital. It's very clear. We're yes. My uh, Michael Mack, my my immediate boss, he's uh, he's always been. He brought me here to work on on live shows here, and um, he's always frustrated. Like, how? When are you going to evolve? When are you going to take this further? When are you going to include some type of media product, whether it's a VR, whether it's to something into shows? To, because I've taken him to some, uh, which I won't mention, some really celebrated European shows, uh, very historical and fantastic. And he's saying to me, when is it ever going to evolve? And, and he's pushing, pushing, pushing along this uh, and dragging me, kicking and screaming because I'm a lot <laughs> older than him. And, I'm, and, I, yes. and I realize when I see my children with the phone in their hand 24-7, I realize yeah. it's the only way we have to accept it. We can't just say it's yep. not us. So, so you understand we, we have to uh, teach ourselves. Well, I think it's with a lot of um, industries, even let's say cars, for example. Cars probably never thought that they were going to have to turn to electricity or that people were going to be interested in a full electric car. So it's the same even with YouTube, with my everything that I do. The platform has changed tremendously. They never used to offer live streaming, one-on-one -on -one chats. They never used to offer, you know, video calls with people and stuff like that. And now it's evolving. Either you have to go with the flow of the future or you get left behind, unfortunately. And that's what, what I don't What do you think happen. about that? Because the world is becoming more and more intrusive into Yes. <laughs> into the lives. And, and you're out there. You're out there. You're totally genuine. You're totally honest. But how do you actually cut the line and say, that's not what I want to share with you? Because you're, you're very think, open. Yeah. It looks like yes. your, your life is an open book. But at some yep. point, you have I to mean, say. Yes, there are some general things about my life that a lot of people, like my private life, that a lot of people 
don't know. And then if I meet them personally and I have a conversation with them and I tell them and they're like, oh my gosh, I did not know this. And I'm like, because there's something I know that 1000%, if you share a lot um, of your life, you get more people interested. But there also has to be a point where you can separate yourself as an individual from what you put on the internet because the internet is only a snippet, a very tiny snippet of your life. And so I think that's the hardest thing for me is finding a healthy balance between internet Haley and private Haley. But you have many, you have many thousands of people watching you. They, and yep. they must, I mean, do you get personal messages of, of asking you something where you just say, no, I don't want to get involved. I saw somewhere that you said, I wanted to write back to you and thank you, but then I didn't want to, um, uh, abuse our relationship yep because a lot of people tend to forget as well that what they put on the internet it's very easy for people to find out like the information about yourself when i first started youtube i shared so much more of my personal life than i do now which you're probably thinking you shared more because I share a lot right now. Um, but then there was an instance where um, I basically was followed um, and I was with kids that I was watching. And then the person said, hey, I know you from YouTube. And the people that like the kids that I was watching, they had no idea what YouTube was. And they don't know me as the crazy girl from YouTube. They know me as the girl that takes care of them. And so the guy was talking to me. And for me, it was awkward because I've never um, like shared that aspect and then he followed me home and then put my address on the internet and it was very like i said okay i need to stop sharing stuff like this isn't okay like there are people out there that they don't understand the private line of sharing your life on the internet but uh, i mean uh i think certainly i don't know where you lived but uh, you know, I, I think I had this before I went to live in America. There are some areas, which there are in Europe, but I think there's more areas in America where you can be pretty nervous of your safety. But I think yes. uh, in Europe that it's not like that. I, uh, it, I feel very, very safe at any point. I any feel very time. safe here. Yeah, I would never, I don't think I've walked home, you know, probably way after way too many glasses of wine, too many pina coladas, I've walked home. In a dindle. Yeah, two, at 2 a.m., you know, stumbling over stones and I've been fine. People have helped me home and it's all good. Um, can I say that same stuff has happened to me in the United States? Not necessarily. Um, and I don't, I'm not really afraid that anyone would do anything to me. It's just also, I sometimes forget that there are a lot of people watching me. For me, I'm still the girl that has 10 people watching me or just my mom and grandma watching me or something. I don't realize that there are enough people to fill a small town in Germany watching me. Are you, are you surprised of that success? Um, yes. <laughs> 1000%. I think it was what really happened to me one time is that when I was in Florida, um, I was eating with my mother in a restaurant, a random restaurant. It's not like it was a big deal restaurant. And it was only me and my mom and then another family in the restaurant. And this girl came up to me and she's like, I know you from YouTube. She's like, I'm on vacation here from Germany. And she's like, I watch your videos. And she was like just in high school, 18, I think. And my mom was like, your videos? Those videos that you post on the internet? People watch them? And I was like, well, I tell, I send them to you all the time. You don't watch them. She's like, I don't have a YouTube account. And I'm like, oh, okay. So then I think I started realizing then that it was like a snowball effect of there are a bunch of people out there that know me. Or when I went to Mallorca, someone's like, I know you, you're the girl from YouTube. And I'm like, oh yeah, that's me. <laughs> and, and, and how do people around you, I mean, certainly Mike, that um, I'm a little older. I'm, I'm quite a few years older than you. And, and me, this, you're making money online. I, I never had that. I never had that thought. For me, it's sort of fake money. It's that you're making it. You yeah. don't know. I, I'm, I'm of the generation. Nope. I wake up in the morning. I go to my work. I work and I, and I get reimbursed for that. But, but you're making this sort of air money, which is, uh, and, yes. you know, and there's, 
I think most of the people in the world are making the most money online now. But but what did Mike say? Did Mike just look at you and say, what? <laughs> what you've got? Yeah. You're, you're making, you're actually physically making money because they're watching you just talk about your, your life. Yep. Yep. Um, I think Mike, he gets it like because he's like been with me for so long and he started when I think I had maybe 5,000 people watching me, not even 5,000. And like he sort of saw, I wasn't making that much money when I met Mike. I think I was making barely, barely maybe a hundred bucks or something. And so he didn't understand it as well, but he grew with me. But there are a lot of people that I will tell them, oh, I do YouTube and they say, oh, well, is that your only source of income? I'm like, yeah, technically it is. I hate calling it a job because it's not a stable income. Like you said, it's technically fake, it's air money. You don't know how much money you're gonna make. You go to work one day with your salary or your nine to five job, you know, hey, if I work all these hours, I will make X amount of money this month. But for me, I don't know that. I don't know how much money I'm gonna make. I could make $5, I could make a couple thousand dollars, but that's like the sort of gray area that a lot of people don't get that you can make so much money online if you're organized, I should say, and consistent. Well, I think this is, um, is, it, is your accounting background. Is that helping you, you think? <laughs> I think um, it helps a little on the side of being able to understand like just the numbers of it but trying to understand youtube as a platform is so much more than just like a accounting thing you have to have so many analytical um, processes in your head and stuff that people don't get do you think you're helping people at the moment with the with the corona covid situation I think some videos, yes. Um, I realize now that people, what they want is entertainment. They want something funny. They want to take their mind off of stuff because I get it. I'm at home just as much as everyone else and I'm bored, but I turn my boredom into a YouTube video. And so I get that. Did you, did you normally, did you get out? And, because one one thing I, I am uh, quite proud of in, in Europe, I think we have amazing history and you know great museums and i know every american uh when i lived in paris um, uh, paris is full of americans coming to see the uh do you do you go to you you do all of that the museums and and the, yes. the, the tourist attraction sites and I think I've been to Paris maybe three or four times. It could be more, um, but I did. I do have to say I've done a lot, but my goal for after what's happening right now with the world, um, I want to experience more Germany because I'm very Bavaria based. I'm very Munich oriented and I want to just understand more about German history. I have been to other places in Germany, but I just want to go to more regions and see what it's like there. You just got to come across the A8, I think it is, from Munich all the way to uh, Karlsruhe, and then down the A5 and come to your Oba Park. I that I, I promise you. I when promise everything you, opens uh, up, it'll be wonderful to have you. Because uh, I don't know, I don't know how much you know about your Oba Park. Have you? Do you know about it? I know about it. I've actually seen videos online mm -hmm. about it that people have posted on YouTube about it and it looks awesome. But where I know like so much about it, probably not the history of it, probably not. Well, well, then you come over here and then we're going to uh, discover all the lands because we're a themed uh, every uh, uh, many, many European countries. We do a themed area of we've got Switzerland, we've got Portugal, we've got I don't want to say because I'll miss one and somebody will call me and say, oh, you missed that country. <laughs> but we've got many, many different. And, and the, the theming uh, we get in Switzerland, we will get a Swiss person come and say, you've just got it right. It's absolutely perfect. Spain and Portugal and England. And, and in each themed area, you can, eat, uh, you can eat the local cuisine. It's really, really wonderful. You are a roller coaster. I've, I've got a feeling that you're gonna you're gonna do all of the big roller coasters. Yes, that's one thousand percent me, riding all the roller coasters, running around like a chicken with my head cut off and having fun. <laughs> well, that's well, that, that we embrace that. 
And 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 definitely, definitely, you've got to come and uh, come to the water park that we opened last year, Rulantica. Oh, yeah, that's just as a, that's water. that's just as amazing that with with really uh, amazing slides, unbelievable theming. It's, I say it's Europa Park theming because I, I like to believe that's the best in the world. But uh, definitely come to uh, and stay in one of our uh, beautiful themed hotels as well. Oh, you guys! Oh, see, I didn't know that you guys had hotels. We uh, we've got six hotels. They're all they're, they've all got a different theme. We've got a Spanish hotel. We've got a Portuguese and Italian and um, uh, New England. Uh, so uh, I'll I'll speak to the bosses. See whether they'll put you in New England, make you feel at home a little bit. But then we've got a, <laughs> we've got a museum. We've got a museum hotel as well. So at the water park in uh, called, called oh, Cronosar. Wow. So. Uh, I think you'll appreciate it. I think um, I think it's true theming, where which really uh, shares with you. You're you're in that country a little bit, and it's uh, they're very yeah. very nice hotels. Oh, and you can have fun. I think that's also you're experiencing something new, a culture, um, and you're having fun while doing so. Absolutely, that's the whole goal. That's where that's yep. where everyone turns into what you are on a daily basis, just crazy enjoying and like you a said, character. sticking with the head cut off. <laughs> no. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, that's it's exactly just, you know what it's the just all off. about having fun here. Obviously, you'll come with Mike, and uh, and you and, and what it's about is a shared experience because so much is online. Which obviously, like I just said, the world is online and the future is online, but we embrace that. We want people to come and, and enjoy each other doing all these amazing things here. Wow, that's very nice. It's not far away. Just when, once this COVID, once this COVID situation sorts it, that uh, do you think we're safer here? Do you think we're safer here in Europe than in America? Because of course, now is a current topic about this uh, COVID. Um, America in certain places looks like it's going crazy. I 1000% I feel safer in Germany. Of course, everyone complains and um, everyone is a little annoyed and on edge, I would say right now. But I do have to say when it comes to security and safety regarding your health, Germany, 1000% in the culture of people, society, people as a whole, they want to be safe. I feel like when I'm looking at the United States, my friends, they're going out, they're without masks, they're not even taking those precautions. It has nothing to do with the lockdown, it just has to do with the mentality of people. Yeah. So, well, I hope no. that will, uh, maybe, maybe, maybe I'll have the opportunity to have it. I've never been to uh, the Oktoberfest in Munich. I've, I, oh, I've well. seen many videos, but I bet it's crazy now. Oh, I bet it's, crazy. it's an amazing experience. I do have to say, my mom came, I, was it last year? Two, no, it was 2019 she came. Amazing experience. She was, she knocked her, what is it? Knocked her out of her socks. She was. Knocked her socks off. Knocked her socks, knocked her socks off. She was so. I kept talking about it and she says, I don't understand why you keep talking about this festival. And then she came because she said that we have an Oktoberfest in our city. We do have an Oktoberfest in our city um, in Florida, but there's maybe one small little tent for maybe a thousand people. And she came here and there's hundreds and thousands of people. And she was, wow, oh my gosh, huge. Yeah, it's, ama it's amazing. I've got to add. Maybe maybe I'll come and uh, have a beer with you at one one point when I can come over there. That would yeah. be fun. How many how many glasses <laughs> can you hold? How many glasses? Because if you were sir, but you were a dindle model, you didn't serve, right? No, no, I never. But I can hold a few. I could probably hold three or four in each hand. Three, I would say three in each hand, which is a lot. Yeah. I'm strong. Yeah. There, yeah. Is, there is. Are you are you sportive? Do you do uh, do you play sports, tennis, or um, not 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 I used snowboarding? To, no, not snowboarding. When I was younger, I when did I start? I think when I was like five, I started playing soccer. I'll say soccer, football, <laughs> hmm. and then I played up until like my last um, year of high school, and then I got accepted into a school to play for a school. Like for soccer, for like college sports, but I didn't do it. No, 
But you, uh, but, but are you following the American football? Because right now, the um, well, when this show goes out, the Super Bowl will have already happened. But uh, do you follow that? The only reason I'm following it right now is because of Tampa Bay. The Buccaneers, I believe, are going, and that's a big, humongous deal. I have friends and family members that have been Buccaneer fans since the beginning of time, and so this is a humongous moment for them because Absolutely. It, it, yeah, it hasn't happened in so long. And I think they're the only team that has played at home for the Super Bowl. In Super Bowl history, I could be wrong. But I believe I'm you're sure. correct. I believe that that no, yep. uh, because it's different locations every year, and uh, this yep. year it's in Tampa, and I believe that uh, with the Buccaneers making it, I think that's the first time a home a home team has made it. That would be a crazy yep. shame. You're not going back for that, right? Well, my friends, they looked online for tickets because they thought, oh, well, we want to experience it because it's an amazing experience. It's once in a lifetime thing that happens. And I think the tickets were going for $12,600. Yeah, no, because I think uh, there's reduced capacity anyway because of the current situation. Yep. And I thought, yep. I, I said to a friend of mine, I think that would be the most expensive ticket in, in sport, certainly for the Buccaneers. Yes. Because all the guys, yeah, exactly, they don't have the travel. They don't have the traveling issue to go to the Super Bowl. They're right there. They'll pay, yeah, twelve twelve thousand for a ticket. It's crazy. Yep, but I do have a friend. She works in a hospital. She is a nurse, and she's a COVID nurse, and she works in a hospital in Tampa. And they gave her a free ticket and like a guest ticket to bring someone with her. And they're like giving a lot of people that have worked for COVID, like healthcare workers, they're giving a lot of tickets out to those people as well. How um, cool To say thank that? you. That's really cool. That's what I said as a thank you, yeah. Yeah, yeah that's, I mean, uh, how, how can we help? How can we reciprocate with the people yep. that, like you say, a COVID nurse? How can we reciprocate yep. these people that are putting their lives online, on the line to help you and me and everyone, everyone on the planet? Just it's yep. quite emotional when you think about it. Yeah, it's very nice. That's what I said. It's nice to get rewarded for your work, um, whatever type of work it is. It's nice to have someone say, hey, you're doing an amazing job. You've really helped us. Here's a thank you. It could be a bar of chocolate or some flowers. It's still nice. You feel appreciated. Well, and if she sells the tickets, probably doubles her salary I was about for the to year. Say. <laughs> <laughs> say well you know i have a ticket i um, thought you were gonna $12, say thousand dollars you'll have to do one of your podcasts selling the tickets that uh, so i have someone for five hundred dollars here five hundred dollars there yeah we got a six hundred are you doing live <laughs> yeah. are you are you doing live uh live stream podcasts yeah, sometimes it's uh, it's a hit and a miss with me i like them sometimes but um, I would say like once a month, I do one. But it's always in the format um, of just you. You don't Zoom it and speak to other people, or do you? No, I would like to. I'm so bad with technology. I'm the first, me, Haley versus technology. Um, technology will always win me over. Being able to get on this and talk like this is something new and mind-boggling <laughs> to me. But I would love to do that because I think that's really fun and entertaining for people. Do you get many people? Do you get many people asking you for advice? Oh yes, all the time. And then I'll have people that are very persistent, I would say, that they'll ask me something. And I do get a lot of messages and comments. So on average, I think comments on my channel can range from on a monthly basis, anywhere from two to 3,000 to upwards of 10 to 15,000 comments a month. Cool. And so, yeah, and that's just comments. That's not including emails, messages, Facebook messages, and everything else. So then I want to, you know, when people comment on my video, I want to respond. But when you're taking two minutes to respond to one comment and then you have 2,000 more to respond to, I'm like, I'm never going to do it. So then people get upset sometimes when I don't respond to them. But if it's a person writing me five paragraphs talking about they need help for this or that, I'm usually responding. Not all the time, but usually. Mm. Yeah, I was. Uh, yeah. Uh, because your your email address is easy to find, no? I think I saw yep. it. I think it... Uh, well, I won't say where I saw it, but it was fairly easy to yeah. find, actually. 
I tell people if they if they want to email me, I'm more I will I'm I accept any emails um, because what what should happen? I mean, someone will send me an email, and if I can't answer that, I hope that they know that I'm too busy. But I try my best to be as accessible to people as I possibly can. I also like to think that the reason I am successful is because or are because of the people that watch me. And if those people have a question that is specific for me, I would like to help them because they are the reason I am where I am at. Yeah, do you, do you um, but, but like you say, they pester you or somebody can oh, yeah. insist. Yeah, and then some people get upset and then I'm like, oh, I'm really sorry, I didn't see it. And then you're like, it's a very hard conflict sometimes with some people because they feel like they are obligated for an answer or to an answer. And I'm like, in some way, shape or form, yes, but on the bigger scale of things, not really. So, I don't have to answer you. So are you, are you working on this every day with, with answering and reading? Because you're reading oh, yes. all the messages, whatever, right? Even if you haven't got time. Yeah, to I try it. my best uh, uh, on Instagram. That's one thing on YouTube and my email. I'm very I mean, I'm not the fastest, but I try my best to respond to everything that comes on on YouTube and um, my email. Uh, Instagram and Facebook, those are sometimes kept on the back burner, uh, but I do everything myself. I try. I spend every day, a couple hours a day doing just answering messages and comments. So what's next? Well, how, how are you gonna how are you gonna take this to another level, or 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 do you not plan to? I I actually VR the VR thing is, is that I, VR Haley VR Alexis. that would be nice VR Haley that Alexis would be so how cool awesome. would that be? Put the glasses that on would be and awesome. right there in VR with an AR or having an They'd AR. Try to hit me! Someone someone would hit me. <laughs> no, the thing is is that. I actually had no idea what I was doing when I first started my YouTube channel and it's just growing and I don't know what to do next. I would like to keep doing YouTube because it started out as a hobby. It started as me sharing my life and I enjoy it. I think everyone asked me, well, when are you going to stop? I think I'm going to stop when it stop when it stops being fun because it's still fun for me to make these videos. It's still a hobby. It's of course I'm making money um, and all that good stuff, but it's still a very fun thing for me to do. Yeah, but you're sharing uh, and you're sharing happiness. The way that you talk is just so engaging. <laughs> I'm pretty funny sometimes. I do have to say I'm crazy. I watch my videos and sometimes like videos I've made in the past and I'm like, Haley, you can't say those things. And then I'm like, well, that's why people like you. And then I'm sitting there and Mike is like, I can't believe you really said that. And I'm like, me either, but someone, someone understood me. Someone got my humor, thankfully. No, oh, it's really, I, I think it's really nice. People are totally interested in you. And I mean, it could, it could lead to other things somehow. I mean, uh, do you, do you get any job offers out of it because they like your they, they like your character and the way you communicate? Yeah, back um, sometimes the thing because you could do radio I'm for sure. To how to you could it. do a sort of yes. Yep, I've gotten actually you know in the past it was very sad because I wasn't in Germany when I got certain job offers or certain like even for me this isn't a job but this is something fun to do that's like outsourced from YouTube or like it's external from YouTube but it's still like an interesting thing to do for me. So there's stuff like radios will reach out, magazines will reach out, um, what else? I one time had a car brand reach out to me and ask if I wanted to be like um, a sponsor for their magazine that they print or something. And I wasn't here at the time when they did it and they just thought it would be cool. And then that passed, but there are like so many little things that pop up from YouTube that, oh, one of the most interesting jobs for me that I've ever done from YouTube is that an airline reached out and they, I guess, got the rights for my videos. I signed the rights away to my videos, like three videos that I picked out, and they put them on their onboard entertainment for flights from Colombia to Germany. And so if you were riding any of the flights from Colombia to Germany, you would see, you would have the option to watch my videos on the flight. And someone sent me a picture one time of having in the flight, in the airplane, and they're like, your videos are on the airplane here. And I was like, that is really cool. That is really cool. That's... Yeah, that's... 
Amazing. Yep. Amazing. Yep. But no, but uh, but radio because you're you're a personality now. Yeah, I like I like radio. I always tell people that I'm so open. I would do radio in a heartbeat. The thing is, is that trying or even like a, um, I'm trying to think of what else I could do. Something where I just talk because unfortunately the thing with YouTube is that you can't make one hour videos. I mean, you can, but most people don't want to consume a one hour video on YouTube when it comes to my channel. Right. There are certain people that do those things and I didn't start off like that. So people I don't think would like that, but a different format or different location for something like that, I think would be so fun. Yeah, definitely. I mean, and you've got so many, you're so creative with the topics. <laughs> It's because they're personal experiences yeah. and people always are like, why are you making this stuff? I'm like, these things have really happened to me. The things that I'm talking about um, have always most 90% of the time happened to me. But you look like one of those persons that you can see the funny side of a situation. I try my, everything that happens to like happens to me and a lot of the stories that I tell I've told after the fact after I've had time to process it and then I think oh well it might have been a bad situation but I can make it into a funny situation now I can laugh about it now and then if I share it with other people hopefully it's funny for them to watch as well some of the stuff is serious but a lot of the stuff you know stuff happens in life and a lot of bad stuff happens in life, but that doesn't mean it has to bring you down. You can make it into something funny. So you've got, you've got ideas for the next forever, right? I would say the next year. I have stuff written down. Um, it's just me actually getting off of my behind <laughs> and actually doing the work to do all that stuff. Do you wake up but in the I night? Do, have do you wake up in the night with a pen and paper and say, oh, I was. So this. This morning, I think at 5.50 in the morning, I was writing down video ideas because I, I could not stop. I was like, I want to go to sleep and I couldn't sleep. And it, from like midnight to 5 a.m., me trying to sleep, it wouldn't let me sleep. And I'm like, let me just write down this idea and then like get it out of my head because then I'm not able to sleep <laughs> at night. I'm not able to like live properly. You don't do any shows from any locations where the, uh, I, the, the ones that I've seen, you're always at home. But you've yep. never, you've never... I have. That's what. Yeah. Moving forward, I really thought, you know, I told myself moving forward, I was going to go new places, meet new people and do fun, interactive videos where I actually go places and do things and show things to people. Please, and then... please. I invite you, please. Uh, you're you're more than welcome to come here, stay with us and uh, choose a location to do one show from. I'm sure that you would there. We've got so many locations at Europa Park, which is just delicious. That uh, yeah, and I have that, so much more equipment now that I can use that well, I think make it interesting. Our media guys can help you with, and they can teach you. They can't teach me. I think I'm too old to be no. taught. <laughs> but uh, yeah, but but they'll be able to teach you, and you might be able to understand it. Yep. Yeah, that's my goal seriously for 2020 was to do more. And then unfortunately, there are other plans for things, but that's okay because I feel like now, hopefully in the summer, I think is when stuff is going to slowly start getting back to normal. I'll be able to use that time when everything opens up and people's curiosity and wanting to go out and wanting to be active. I think I'll be able to use that to my advantage. Yeah, certainly. Yeah. Um, well, you're a creative person, and uh, you've got a wonderful character. Very, very oh, engaging. You. No, and 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 yeah. it's, it's totally, totally cool that you just you say it like it is. You don't sugarcoat. Yep. Yeah, which I try not to. Sometimes I do, but I try not to. We've got to be polit a little political sometimes, though. I mean, that's what makes it interesting. That's what gives someone a personality, I feel like, when you have an opinion. Of course, my opinion can be abrasive in some manners, but I do think that um, you have to be an individual. A lot of people, they stray away from certain topics, which sometimes you should, but a lot of times you have to be an individual with a mind and with your own thoughts and your own opinion on things. Yeah, well, it's... Uh... Haley, it's been truly uh, wonderful to, to really get to know you, get to uh, listen to you and, and, and see you. And, um, uh, yes. 
really, 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 thank you very much. And um, I just, uh, I, hang on, you see how bad I am? I, I could just kicked, kick the microphone uh, on the floor. But I want to say thank you very, very much indeed. And, and uh, the next time, please come, come, come over and see us. And uh, and we'll we'll have a nice dinner and and you can enjoy this all this crazy stuff which is right outside of this studio. <laughs> awesome. Well, thank you so much for having me. I had a lot of fun. And uh, give my give my best to Mike. I'm looking forward to meeting him. Oh yes, he's probably bored by himself right now on the couch. Poor Mike. Ah, uh, that's okay. All right. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. <laughs>